welcome back to my youtube channel and alfred is my name please subscribe to my youtube channel and enjoy technical drawing lessons the link is below there and my contacts are there as well okay let us look at trochoid and when we talk about trochoid we are looking at a circle rolling on a horizontal or on a straight baseline but with the point to plot lying either inside this rolling circle or outside the rolling circle as you're going to see now this is what we are talking about when the circle rolls on the straight baseline with the point peel lying either inside or outside the rolling circle then we call that a trochoid let us see that in the sketch below when you look at this sketch here uh, you're seeing that there is a circle on the horizontal line and the it's positioned like that you're seeing another circle outside with point p1 and another circle inside with point p2 and the the circle which is attached to the horizontal line is called the rolling circle the one which is inside or the one which is containing the point p1 and another one containing point P2, we call them generating circles. We also have the baseline. The line onto which the rolling circle moves is called the baseline. So the moment you understand these three terms, the rolling circle, the circle which is rolling, generating circle, the circle which contains the point to plot, and the baseline that's the line onto which the rolling circle moves when you look at here i've also tried to produce the sketches of the curves to be produced when those points move for example point p2 will generate a curve of that kind and that curve we call it inferior trochoid because it is inside it is inside the rolling circle we also have that curve generated by point p2 and that curve we call it superior trochoid now let us get the details of this as we can see it here Continue watching that uh, animation as you see the circles rolling. So as you look at that circle, you discover that there are different points. The one inside, the one attached to the circle, and another one attached outside. And they are rolling to generate different curves. So the one which is attached to the circle, it's a cycloid, as we looked at that earlier. The one inside is called the inferior, and the one which is outside, we call it superior, trochoid. So that's what the animation is showing us. Let us look at the construction part of it we are starting with superior trochoid and we still agree that when we talk about superior trochoid we are looking at the look the, the locus of the point which moves when the circle rolls on the straight line but that point we generate is outside the rolling circle Let's have an example. So our example here is showing us that we have 
the baseline we have the rolling circle of radius 30 millimeters and we have the point p outside the rolling circle at a distance of 15 millimeters we also have point r 15 millimeters up so we are going to plot for p then we shall finalize with r let us start the first thing we do here is to copy the diagram but before you copy maybe let's have the guiding question the question is saying plot the locus of points p and r as the circle rolls for a complete revolution along the straight baseline as shown above so our diagram is here so let us first copy the diagram and when you copy because you position your circle on a horizontal baseline now the plotting of this is very simple just like we plotted the cycloid the first thing we do here <coughs> is to divide the rolling circle and when you divide the rolling circle you'll have your 12 divisions as you can see them here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 back to 0 and i'm labeling that in the direction of the rotation of that circle having done that we are also going to draw a horizontal line through the center of that circle you have and when you put the center line it will move in that direction pick your compass take the small compass radius of the divisions you have created on this rolling circle mark off divisions on the horizontal baseline and when you mark the divisions you'll have something of that kind you have from 0 up to 12 raise up your lines parallel to any vertical line here to obtain the center lines for example if you draw for point 1 you'll have the center line c1 when you draw for 2 you'll get the center line c2 repeat the same with 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 to obtain the points on the center line and those points will raise to centers c3 c4 up to c12 now we are going to be positioning the circle at different centers and for example if we position the center at point c1 we shall have the circle like that and now this tells us that this point p has moved it to new point one and of which we should create point one on this new circle and when we do that we shall have to take the small arc radius put your compass at one make an arc so you have created the point which will generate the point p one how do we do it we now join the line from the center c1 through that point to create the line which will carry that point p and we can now take we take the distance from the center here to where the point p is for example this up to here you put your compass at c1 you mark off the new point for p and when you mark that point p it will be p1 we move now to center c2 with our circle and when you put it there it's at point two now we are going to mark twice this time we take the small arc radius put our compass at two we mark off two divisions and this is the point through which the line carrying the point p will be passing from so join the line from c2 through that point to create the line like that mark off your point p2 using the same distance from the center to that point put it as c2 get that point and when you get that point that point is p2 carry the circle put it at c3 and when you do that now here we're going to mark three times and when you mark three times the line will pass through the horizontal point and it will create the line like that on that line we can now create the point p p3 and you're going to see that our point 
P3 is at that point, like that. So that is P3. We are going to repeat the same thing with the C4, C5, C6, C7. So when we do that, we shall have 12 circles positioned at different centers like that. And we go to circle C4, we shall mark four times. Circle C5, we mark five times. Circle six, six times until we complete the circles. And when you mark, you'll have those arcs carrying different positions. Also, join now your lines from C through position 4, C5, position 5, C6, position 6, C7, position 7 until you finish. And when you do that, you'll have those lines like that. Take the distance you've been using to mark point P to mark off the new points on those different lines you've created. And when you mark, you'll have those points like there's a point here, there's a point you've created, you have created point, the point, point until you reach 12. Those are points P4, P5, P6, P7, P8, P9, 10, 11, 12. And that is how you plot the curve. Now what you are going to do, you are going to join those points using a free hand. And when you join, <coughs> you come up with those points making the curve like that. And that is a speedier trochoid. And in, you can just outline that curve to have it complete. But now we have this point R. This point R I've put, assuming it is coming from the top. How will the curve move? The plotting will be in the same way. So we shall be moving from here as we mark off the points. But let us see how to do it. So we shall have our points. Let's just extend those center lines to have the points for plotting as you can see them there. And now when I want to plot for point R1, I'm going to move with a small compass radius. I put my compass here at the new point on the circle. I make an arc for R1. And when I make the arc, it will be an arc here. I join the line from C1 through that point to create the line which will contain R1. Then take the arc radius from the center to the R1 from here up to there, that distance, you mark off the point here. And that point gives you R1. When you go to 2, we shall mark twice on the circle for 2 to get the point for R2. When you join the line through it, it will give you the point. So mark off the distance to get R2. Repeat the same with C3 to get R3. Do the same with 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Like that. And when you mark off those points, you'll get R5, R6 until you reach R12. What you do, also join using the free hand to get the curve as you can see it there. Outline, outline to come up with a complete curve. And that is how you draw the superior trochoid. They are the same. This one is when the point is below. This one is when the point is up or above the circle. Outline the rolling circle. Also outline the base line. Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And Alfred is my name. The link is below there. And the contacts are there as well. Thank you.